Raja, my friend, is in Ramallah and uh, couldn't be here tonight for the reasons that you know. I'm honored and saddened to be standing here in his stead. This is from We Could Have Been Friends, My Father and I, a Palestinian memoir. Now, over half a century later, with Israel in full control of the Palestinian population living in Israel itself and in the occupied territories, I want to tell my father that history may have proved him wrong, that perhaps his was but an empty threat and Israel must have known it. The occupier has seemingly won. The word occupation has been dropped from Israel's vocabulary. The curriculum taught in their schools tells their students that the whole of greater Israel is theirs and that the Palestinians have no rights over that land. I want to say to him, you underestimated Israel's power, resourcefulness, and long-term planning. The conversation is continuing and my father answers me. Do you really believe it was inevitable that history should have taken that course and that it couldn't have been otherwise? Of course not. It was all a consequence of the two sides refusing to recognize each other's existence. It could have been otherwise. When I raised the prospect of violence ensuing if Israel did not pursue the course of peace, I knew it was an empty threat. I had no illusions about the capabilities of our people in the occupied territories who had been under the harsh regime of Jordan for 19 years and had nothing with which to fight Israel. Yet, to Israel, the possibility that it might fail to control over the over a million Palestinians who came under its rule was a real cause for worry. The threat was made at a time when to them this was a real fair, and so I tried to convince them that peace is the better course to follow and to urge them to accept our proposal for a Palestinian state. You say they've won, and you cite the fact that they deny the Palestinians have any rights over the land and have dropped you out of their consciousness. This only means that they've succeeded in deceiving you as well. You think that because they've made you invisible, they've won? It pains me to hear you put it like that. This is a recipe for perpetual war. Don't you realize that the only victory is the achievement of peace between our two peoples? How it saddens me to see that the only relations between you are those of master and slave, one of exploitation, hatred, seizing every opportunity to destroy each other and yet you call their denial of Palestinians their victory. Just think how much time Israel has wasted learning the tricks of interrogation, repression, and other coercive ways to control the Palestinian population under their rule. Of course, they had the best masters to teach them, the Inglés, who left them their brutal methods of torture, house demolitions, and deportation all enshrined in laws such as the Defense Emergency Regulations, which Israel found ready and used extensively over the years. True, they've managed to control the Palestinians and in the process incarcerated many thousands who ended up despising Israel more than ever and determined to keep fighting it. But then the two nations are now further apart than ever. Has any of this brought peace any closer? And I reply, of course not. Yet, still, the fact is that they won. To them, it's a war to destroy the Palestinians, deny their existence and rights to the land. And they did it. They won. And that's all that matters to them. As to the cost, it was much, much higher for us than for them. Nothing to compare. They lost thousands of soldiers. We lost many more, and still remain stateless. Then he tells me, 
the cost they bore goes far beyond the number of dead in the course of the numerous wars they waged. Loss of life was only part of it. How much better things would have turned out had they used their superior skills and resources to help develop the region rather than continually destroying it? That's their choice, I say, a choice they could make because they won. And he says, the only real victory is when we've both won. <laughs>